When you're 82 years old, it's hard to get a job. It's hard to get a job. In the back of their mind, they're thinking, hey, this guy might keel over with a stroke or a heart attack, or he might die. I've always said I'm going to coach till I die. First year, I interviewed five places. Basically, I think at 82, I was too old. But he had retired at Logansport High School when he was 80. And um, it was pretty clear that he missed it. So it was a couple years after that that he then started reaching out. So the second year, I went probably 15 places. and. I just couldn't get them to flip the switch and say, okay, I look old. It's just the whole thing. We've lost a lot of industry. We lost several lengths. St. Joe paper closed. It has been tough economically for us. I think there was a study down recently that we're one of the poorest counties. And between that, people moving away and stuff, it's been a struggle. The second and third year I was here, that's about the time that the, the basketball team started to have their struggles. Hard to anybody was in the stands. And they ended up at one point losing 71 to 72 games. I think we lost 61 games in a row. So it was really tough at that point. We had a coaching vacancy, and then I got a phone call from Coach Hoover. He sounded like an older gentleman. He said, I'm an old man, and I just want you to hear me out. I called Tony, and uh, he said, well, I've already done my research. I've already picked a guy, and I said, well, I'm gonna be over there, and he said, okay, well, you can stop in. Nine o'clock the next morning, Jerry shows up, and of course, he's 83 years old, and it was, you know, you're thinking, okay, I know you said older, but I didn't think. So he sat down and he said, uh, my son wants to come and coach and he has some kids and, and my son has a cousin who has a kid who's really, really good. He left, so we started looking up the videos. We typed in Luke Brown. And we're just like, wow. The things he was able to do at that age. And I've never seen anything like it. And Luke about the fourth grade, he told me, he said, hey, Dad, I want to play Division I basketball, and I'd like to play professional somewhere. I've always been a really hard worker since I was young. I'd have friends over just to hang out with, and they'd, they'd want to eat lunch or something, and I'd tell them that i got to go do ball handling for 30 minutes while they're eating. He is a very skilled player, but there's something more than that. His focus about all things is different than other kids his age. I know that Jerry's a legend in Indiana, in the Hall of Fame. My granddad and him are like first cousins and like pretty much best friends. And this is me, and then this is Luke's granddad. So Jerry Hoover is my dad's first cousin. I've watched Jerry since I was a toddler coach basketball. In the back of my mind, I was thinking the whole time, how can I get Jerry back into coaching and coach my son? And then I began talking with Don, his son, and we thought, that'd be really cool if we could get our kids to play together under your dad. I called our principal, Scott Scheimer. We started looking around, find all we could on him. And uh, I remember Scott looked at me and goes, we gotta hire this guy. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute here. I mean, first of all, this is, this is pretty cool. Second of all, I'm not, what's the catch? I said, where are you going? And Jerry said, well, I'm gonna talk to them over here and see if they're looking. I said, well, don't go anywhere yet. We're working on this. 
and mm -hmm. obviously they must have felt in the end that, that this was a good fit for them and uh, it, it's turned out great since they've been here. Trays, come on. Talk now. Sprint, sprint, Brownie. Nice pass, Mark. It's all right. Just coming in, I was nervous. I thought, you know, people would get mad that I was taking their spot or, you know, that, that I moved in. Why would I move in? <laughs> That was one of the things I was probably most concerned with is how is the community going to react to my son coming in because you know there can be jealousy and things like that. Going to his first game, I can't remember exactly, but I know it wasn't a packed house. The rumor was out that, hey, this kid's pretty good, but it wasn't a huge crowd. The first game, he probably had 30, 30 some points. As word got out that this kid could play, then the crowds built and built, and by the fourth or fifth game in, we had one of the best crowds we've had, at least since I've been here the six years. And then all of a sudden you start getting the calls about who is this kid, and things kind of took off from there. Special time here. Yeah, th th this is a movie in the making. I never thought I'd see a sequel to Hoosiers, but if you don't have to because you're watching it right now live. Hey. Run him! Run him! It's something amazing to watch, especially as a fan. The chins are up. It's a community. Yes. You know, it's all about the community. This is just so neat. This is a Tuesday night. The stands just filled up. You know, the community just was so excited to have a winning basketball team. They just started coming out of the woodwork. I mean, it was awesome just seeing the change in the community. Once we started winning, you know, the positive attitude came back. and. Um, I mean, kids are telling me, you know, little kids are saying, I want to transfer to Blackford, and they say thank you all the time for us coming here, which I don't really understand why they're thanking me, but, I mean, it's just a great experience. That's very nice, isn't it? Nice article. See, it's got a picture of Luke. See, and it says, I was right in here in this restaurant. A couple of ladies came up and said they were really happy that I was here. And I said, well, thank you. And she said, I own the beauty parlor here in, in uh, Hartford City. And she said, you're the talk of the beauty parlor. And I said, well, I don't know whether that's good or bad. When I went to get tickets for the game Saturday, I saw him sitting in a room. And so I just went in there and introduced myself to him and thanked him for what he had done for the community and how much we were enjoying it. They are very humble people and very nice people and they have just brought our boys up with them and... Make them feel better about themselves. Yes, and including them, not... Mm -hmm. I thought it would be excluding them and it's not. It's they include them. It's kind of exciting to think that, you know, our little town is getting recognized all over the place. They haven't heard of Hartford City, they have now. They have now, yeah. The Blackford boys basketball team has drastically turned around their program in the last year and a half. Sophomore Luke Brown, who leads Indiana High School basketball in scoring, recently scored his thousandth point. Brown is the fastest to score 1,000 points in state history. Thank you. Thank you. You're our hero. What was humbling was coming to the games and you know having little old ladies grab you by the hand. Thank you for moving your family to Hartford City. It's just tragic that the industry has has uh, you know dried up and gone away. I feel that among the people that I talk to. I pass that along. I put it on the kids. I don't make any bones about it. I, I tell them, hey, this is not the normal run-of-the-mill situation. They mean a lot to the community, and they cannot let the community down because of just the way it is. It's bigger than basketball.